Dr. Kabat earned his PhD in physics from MIT in 1993. Hi, Dr. Kabat. I haven't seen you in like uh, two years almost. Yeah, that's uh, that's right. It's uh, it's been a long time. So how uh, how have you been? How are you? Good. Thanks. So uh, I just wrote a paper about a little thing that I came up with. I don't know. I think a month ago. So I was sitting in urgent care because I was kind of sick, and I and I was like, hmm, I wonder what would happen if I just calculated the perimeters of several seams. Uh -huh. uh, and I decided I'll just make them regular polygons because it's kind of hard to calculate the perimeter of an irregular eight-sided polygon. So uh -huh. after making five or six of them, I realized that I can make a general formula for that. And then uh, after that visit, it, uh, all of those ideas spiraled out of control. Okay, wow. Well, yeah. Okay, yeah, very nice. Um. Okay, yeah, I guess do you want to tell me a, a little bit about uh, kind of what you did? And... Yeah, if I have some sort of equilateral triangle, uh, we're talking regular polygons here, so obviously all the side lengths have to be the same. I'm going to define the radius of any regular polygon is just the circumradius. That is, the distance... Uh, from the circumcenter to one of the vertices. So, uh, -huh. uh yeah. So, uh, what I was trying to do, sorry my work is a little messy right here. Uh, what I was trying to do was define the uh, perimeter of any shape in terms of the length of its circumradius, which is going to be said to be r. Mm -hmm. So what I thought was that if I add more sides to a shape, it starts looking more and more like uh, a circle. So what I was thinking at the beginning was then its perimeter must also approach a circle. Uh -huh. So here was the first challenge I was presented with. Uh, the common uh, common knowledge is that the perimeter of a circle is 2 pi r, where r is the radius of a circle. But the problem is, what is the radius of a regular polygon? Because one point of the polygon is not equidistant from the center, uh, while another one might be a different distance from the center. So I eventually settled on the definition of the circumradius, although you might as well use the apothem as well. Okay. So then what I did was uh, I used the circumradius to find it for one polygon, and then the next polygon, and then the next, until I eventually realized there was a pattern in where I was finding the polygons. So here was my first big realization. If you have a polygon with n sides, for example, I have a pentagon here, so n is 5. Then, if we take the center here, or the circumcenter in this case, then our circumradii simply split our polygon of n sides into n equilateral, well, not equilateral, but isosceles triangles. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we know mm -hmm. they are isosceles because this distance has to be the same as this distance. That's a perfectly good way to do things. That's a way of dealing with this problem that the function is is multi-valued. Um, and so, you know, saying that you'll always take the positive square root uh, is a good way to make the function kind of well-defined so that it gives you a single value um, no matter what n you put in. Um, that's a perfectly good thing to do. Take the derivative of the function y equals x squared. That is a long problem, but we did it very well. Times t squared. That's my position. Uh, what you gotta tell me is, did I break the law? Can you um, can you use math to uh, to tell me that? Yeah. How do I you don't... do it? 
uh, yeah, we don't probably uh, won't use that function later in the math. Okay. Mm. You first you draw a diagram. Remember, you need all diagrams to solve all math problems. If if you had no diagram, you wouldn't be able to find out how you would solve this. That's right. Diagrams are good. To eighty over three, one point two two. Uh huh. What gives you thirty two of the eight? You. Started break break the law. So, one away classify. So, one one slit, two slits. Mm -hmm. One slit will give you one band, just like a marble. But two slits will give you an interference pattern of many bands. Uh huh. Now, let's test the electrons. Let's do that. How do electrons behave? Oh, everything was orbiting around the Earth. The Earth, Earth was the center of the universe. Did, did that idea hold up? For a long time, yes it did. Um, I believe that it might be because of two reasons. One, because humans are selfish and they like to hear that they are at the center of everything. Hmm. I'm thinking about eating that, you eating that candy right now. I am too. Because <laughs> it looks pretty tasty. Yeah, it's chocolate. <laughs> so, so we're going to ask Delta T goes to zero. Yeah, do tell me about that. So if you have, like, say, two galaxies, and not an expert at drawing galaxies, these may just look like um, the line integrals, I believe, but... They look like um, good galaxies to me. So this is your bike. I don't usually you know how to draw a bike right now, so I'll just draw a skateboard. Okay, a skateboard is fine. I like to skateboard too. <laughs> 